welcome to More Than. I'm your host, Kevin Carroll, powered by First Tech Federal Credit Union, and I'm thrilled to be sharing with you this next episode. So you might have heard this phrase, hope will not be canceled. Well, guess what? I know where hope lives, and it lives in my neighborhood via a fence. And I have the person who created this amazing community public art piece, Jen Tate, and I'm excited to introduce her to all of you and to introduce this amazing public art project. So, Jen, it's so great to see you. Hi, Kevin. I'm so excited to be here. This is amazing. Awesome, awesome. And so, selfishly, I need to let people know we are kind of neighbors. And so I love the fact that I'm, I'm just up the street from you and we've said hello to each other from time to time. But then I think we really connected during the pandemic and your effort was the catalyst, if you will, to create that connection between us, but even more so in a bigger way with the community, our neighbors, and then people you know, much further away would come and actually visit this amazing community art enterprise effort that you did. And let's actually talk a little bit about your background. I think it would be interesting to learn a little bit about you. So share a little bit about yourself, please. I've lived in Portland for almost 20 years. Um, and during that time, I've worked in front of the camera, on stage, behind the camera, uh, all, all sorts of different places in sort of the media world. Uh, most recently, I made a documentary about karaoke that took me into the world of documentary filmmaking and I couldn't get enough of it. So now I'm the co-founder of Oregon Media Lab, which is a local business that produce and both events and media projects here in the Portland area. Did you study film? I study, I have a writing background and then I, I do have a master's in media and education. So I, uh, I've spent a lot of time around the world of, of film. And I know one of the things that I think is really interesting because your world with film is about motion, but the fence is not about motion. The fence is about still and words. And so I find that really an interesting juxtaposition of your worlds there. When the pandemic happens, and I've walked by your house several times, and you, it is quite a, a large fence that you have, and it surrounds your property and the pandemic happens. And I know that your fence was just nice, blank, clean. There was nothing on it. It was a typical fence in the neighborhood. What prompted that moment for you? It took me only about three days uh, into lockdown with my family in the house and everyone falling apart. And it was, it, I know it was exactly March 19th, 2020. Um, I woke up and I, I do feel like there was almost a sense of, my fence was was separating me from the outside world and I felt so disconnected. I, I was laying there in bed, unmotivated to get up, and then I decided I was going to paint, we're all in this together, on the fence because I had paint in the house and I wanted to say that to the outside world because I was I was feeling alone, like so many of us were. My family kind of looked at me like I was a little nuts, but they're like, okay, if it's going to cheer you up today, go for it. And so, you know, I went out there in the middle of the day with my bright red paint and I painted this phrase. And right as I was finishing, uh, a car pulled up behind me and this woman leaned out and just said, thank you. And I said, hey, you know, you can come add something to the fence if you want, we could all do this. And she pulled off a little cap um, on her head. She was in the middle of chemo and she was on her way back from the hospital. And she said, you know, this is my, my path to and from the hospital and I, I can't get out. I don't feel safe. You know, and we're, we're yelling this to each other from 15 feet apart, you know. Um, and but she just said, I'm going to start driving by your fence now on my way to the hospital. And then I started crying and then she started crying. And we just we had this moment. I sort of went back inside realizing that while I had gone outside to do something that in many ways felt selfish to me, you know, it was something I was doing to make myself feel better. I had connected with someone and it, it had it had an impact on someone else too. And I just thought like, I am definitely going out and painting something else tomorrow. And, you know, a few days later I was out there and, and, you know, she drove by again and the kids in the neighborhood were walking by and, you know, we couldn't be near each other at that point, but I could tell them, bring your chalk and go, you know, draw down there. 
That's what you did to me. Yeah, you. I know, you were one of those people. Yes, I remember seeing you out there, go get your paint, go get your top, come and put something up on here. And I remember going to my house and telling my wife about some woman down the street and she's like putting phrases on her fence. My wife goes, oh, wow, right? But it was so early in it. And I love that it had already started to become this bridge, right? This bridge builder, this connector, this ability to to, like you said, separate the distance between us. So that whole social distancing, that word was such an oxymoron. The, the worst phrasing was physical distancing, but we needed to be social. And you felt that necessity early, which I think was really remarkable that you knew yourself really quickly. Like, I better find a way to connect with people, but not knowing that it would become really this public art phenomena in many, many ways. I think that's what's been remarkable about it. And so the first phrase again on it was? Was we're all in this together. That's still a very appropriate phrase and something that everyone should be thinking about. And as you start to build on it, and when people see this, they're gonna be gobsmacked. Like they're just gonna be like, what? Like they're probably thinking, oh, it's a nice little effort. No, it's like remarkable what has happened and the energy around it and the stories that have been told on it and the seasons you can see on it. I mean, I painted on it every day for that first year. Um, and so, you know, the things that were important to us and mattering to us in May were very different by September. You know, we had a tumultuous summer here in Portland. Then moments of hope and the people coming together and, you know, working for change and supporting each other. And all of that is reflected somewhere on the fence because, you know, every, you remember what it was like then, like every day we were waking up and it was like, what crazy thing is happening in our world? And like, what is this little piece of, of hope that is, is keeping us going? And you were in many ways, like a town crier, if you will, right? You were announcing the good news, you were announcing what was going on, you were sharing something you might be feeling. And then it was, a, to me, it was a prompt for others to join. And so with each day, if you weren't being and serving as that town crier, that catalyst, like, hey, I'm back, right? We're still here. We're still forging forward. We're finding a way. And I think that was part of the, the magic of the effort too, is that, like you said, every single day, you put something on the fence, which then I'm sure instigated someone else to join because the way it grew and the messages and being able to look at different moments on it, like it's a timeline, like you said, a time capsule, you can literally chart different things. And I know the outside of the fence has a certain look, but the inside of the fence also, where a lot of people might not be paying attention, but because I walk from different um, streets, I see the inside of your fence, but I notice there's a little different kind of energy on the inside. What's the difference between the outside and the inside of the fence and the messages? Well, you know what started? The, the very first thing that went on the inside of the fence was about a month in, and it was Mother's Day. It was that first Mother's Day, and I have two daughters, and without me knowing, uh, they got up at dawn, they got up at like 530 and they went outside and painted huge murals and messages to me for Mother's Day. So I came down and they had flowers and that they were standing in front of this amazing, I still get teary I thinking about it. It is the best gift I've ever been given because it was just, it was what I needed exactly in the moment when I needed it, you know? Um, mm. so that was like, and I got to see that every day. I can see it from my dining room, you know? So that made the inside of the fence kind of sacred to me because it was like, this is what I get to see. When you think about this effort and then you think about community, what does community mean to you? I'm not sure that I thought, I think about it the same way now that I, that I did before because it, back to that those first few days what became very clear to me was i'm i'm locked in my house like i feel very alone i felt like i didn't have any community i couldn't be out with my work friends i couldn't be social with my family and friends but what happened very quickly with the fence was oh guess what i introduced myself to my mailman 
I didn't know his name, you know, I, and I and he's someone I see every day. And then people who walk by my house, walk in their dog. I was like, man, I see that guy every day and I don't know his name. And so we started chatting and, and then it was like, I was like, hey, is this guy, John, I said, John, we can't just wave and say hello. Every time we see each other, now we have to ask each other something interesting. So like, I know what music he listens to. But just this idea that community is, is what you make it and community is not being alone. So sometimes it's, it's finding others in whatever space you have to be in. Yes, and to create that connection and community and a sense of belonging in whatever way you can. And I've had, I have similar um, moments and stories like that with neighbor kids and, you know, just different relationships that have grown even deeper during this. And one of the things that's been pointed out to me from a research standpoint, Adam Grant, who's an amazing author and a professor at University of Pennsylvania, he's actually a colleague of Angela Duckworth of Grit fame, right? In the TED Talk, it's got like 24 million views and everything. So Adam Grant actually pointed out in an interview that people may not realize they've actually grown during this global traumatic event. And one of the ways he talks about growth is deeper relationships. So now when you think about that conversation with all those people and, you know, hey, we've got to ask something interesting or ask a question of each other to elicit a conversation, not just how are you doing? And there's actually a, a document out there, 20 questions to ask besides how are you doing, right? And so one of the questions is, you're gonna love this, Jen, what's giving you hope today? There you go. Right? And so I just think that's so lovely. What you decided to do was to create a greater sense of belonging and connection and deeper relationships with people. I think this moment, made a lot of people more transformational with each other and not transactional and not just, you know, casual and cavalier with our greetings that you actually pause and wait for the response. And so I just love the fact that you've created this canvas, right? This platform for folks to share their messages and share their words. Is there any, you know, words that really stand out or moments with the fence that really are endearing and that you remember? The fence has served an amazing role uh, for our block in particular. Like our, we, we were a close block. We had block parties a couple times a year, that kind of thing. But um, it really became a gathering place for us during the year. Uh, whether it was, you know, we did a Halloween parade. We did, last year we did holiday humming because we weren't supposed to sing <laughs> because we were trying to be safe. So we did holiday humming in, at the fence. Um, we, we did a number, we, we had a number of, um, like candlelight vigils, both for, uh, larger global issues that everyone was dealing with. And, you know, we, we lost members of our, of our block during the time. So, so being able to come and have candles out there on the fence together, listen to music, it, it was really, really therapeutic for our, our immediate community here. Were there ever any moments where you might've been or maybe your, your family might have been like just out or whatever in the, in the yard. And, and there would have been a moment that like, oh my gosh, what's happening to the fence or who's riding on the fence or having that curiosity? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, first of all, you should know that we quickly had to name the people who, who walk along, like looking at the fence and taking pictures. So we call you fencers. That's what we, <laughs> that's what we call you guys. Um, and you're out there. Oh, there's fencers out there. And sometimes my kids would tell me that just because they like, they knew I would be excited to go out and talk. And so I would just open the door and walk out and be like, Hey, are you looking at my fence? Do you want to talk and be my friend? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but one time I was not home and my, one of my daughters was in the yard with her girlfriends and she heard the sound of a spray paint can being shaken. And uh, she got very defensive and got freaked out. And she went jumping up through the gate open, goes running out, ready to confront, you know, whoever's gonna tag our fence or what's happening. And it's two 10 year old boys who look up at her and they're like, can we put love and Black Lives Matter on your fence? <laughs> She's like, uh, yes, please. I mean, and so that was sort of like the biggest threat that, you know, the, as far as we're, as far as we know, that the fence ever, you know, has faced. Although I, I do have, it's very weird. I do have occasional fence nightmares. 
I just, I worry about the fence when like something, someone is going to burn it or something's going to happen to it. And then there's other times when I've actually felt like it's been keeping me safe. Cause I've just felt sort of like, if I am going to mess with a house, I'm not going to mess with that house. Like it's got a happy blanket around it. Got some good juju, some good karma on it for sure. Because I think that's one of the other remarkable things is the amount of respect that people have had for it and no one has defaced it. No one has bothered it. Everyone has been really respectful of it. And, you know, for me to be there from the beginning, I saw the first thing you put on there. So I've been around it since March 19th. We've, we've been neighbors, right? And, and in passing said hello, but then we've had other conversations. And I know that there's even been times you've been inspired by some of the work I've been doing and happen to bump into each other. So I know that one of our, our, our first episode for more than you actually got inspired by one of the quotes that I used and put it on the fence. I did, I was in the middle of watching it and I literally just hit pause and I grabbed my little notebook and I was like, I gotta go put that on the fence. I love that. Well, I can't, I can't wait for us to see that. I'm looking forward when I come to visit, then we'll get a chance to see that. I also know I was, doing another thing for a little company, a kid's company about. Now, it was a kid's book about at the time, but you happen to pop outside and say, hey, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm showing them the hope fence. And they're like, that's so cool. And I remember you said you got inspired by that and you wrote a kid's book about on the fence too. I did. I did. I love that. I love that. Oh, you know what we didn't ask you is, how did it come to be known as the hope fence? Oh, sure. Sure. You know, it was about... It was about a month or a month and a half in and I was outside painting and a woman came by and took some pictures and she came up and said, hey, I want to I want to put this on social media. You know, do you, how should I tag it? And I was like, oh, God, the pressure. <laughs> um, I, have to think, I have to make up a hashtag. Um, and I, I think at that moment I was standing at the corner and I had just painted the word hope and, and that had come up as an idea. And so it, it, just the idea that there was a lot of hope on the fence. So I said, how about hashtag hope fence? And, you know, it took off from there. Uh, in fact, this last year in March, um, I, I went outside and found this young family from San Jose, two teachers, and they were on spring break and they had built a visit to the hope fence into their itinerary of, of like driving around with their kids and they brought their own paints, but they had seen the hashtag on social media and had tracked us down. So now you, you, you're part of the, of the uh, tourist attraction, right? I love that, right? So the tourism, we can count on the Hope Fence has elevated our tourism economy here in Portland. I love it. Folks are making pilgrimages to the Hope Fence. How about that? It really, in my mind for a long time, was something I was doing for me that I was like, so excited other people also liked because I was like, I'm going to keep doing it whether you guys like it or not. I would love it if other people joined in and it, it's not everybody wants to participate, but people want to talk about it and they want to to share in the words, you know, that just the power of the words themselves. And I took great care because I'm not an art, a, a painting artist. I'm, I'm a writer. Um, at heart. And so the words part that comes naturally to me. I've always collected quotes. I've always, you know, that, that part, I always have a list of things that I wanted to share. So that part came easily, but it felt so permanent to be picking up, you know, real paint and painting on there. And so I would go really slowly and I would kind of try to ruminate on what it was I was saying, what the words were. And that was very, also very sort of calming and therapeutic. I, I called it a, a public journal. No, I think that's brilliant. It really is. I think it is a public journal. I think it is um, a community journal in many ways. And I love the fact that it actually has uplifted so many people. And so the positive energy from it, the positivity, the fact that, you know, you can see it differently too. And I, I can't wait for folks to actually get a chance to visit with me and to come and see you. But the fact that you can be on the same sidewalk and cross the street and see different messages. 
You can, and you can get real close because I've started painting, you know, I'm, I'm running short on space. So I got to get, I got my little paintbrushes out now and I'm adding teeny tiny little messages. I like to call those little Easter eggs, right? Like little fun little things like, oh, look, there's that and that. So I'm always trying to see, like if someone puts something in an obscure little spot and they are like, there's spots that people like painstakingly put like a little message to see if you actually will take the time to discover it. So I love the fact that it also has this element of, of surprise and delight, discover and wonder, positivity, energy. I just am thrilled that it's taken off, but even more so that you sustain the effort and continue to invite people to join with you and join forces. And I just think it's a remarkable effort. And I'm, I'm just so proud to be a neighbor of yours and to know that um, you were willing to have the courage to put that out there. So thank you, Kevin. That means that means so much to me because I am a big fan of your work. So the feeling is mutual. <laughs> I'm gonna come see you, right? I'm really looking forward and we're gonna bring, you know, some folks that are gonna get a chance to actually see the fence. So I'm gonna come by here shortly and we're gonna have a little meetup. I know one of the things that we talked about and I just wanna ask you this as a last question is, what do you hope will happen to it? You know, because fences don't last forever, right? Fences start to get old and everything. What do you hope will happen to the fence once it's time to basically decommission it, if you will? This fence was on its last legs before the pandemic. We, we will have to replace the fence. There are some boards already fallen down. I've, I've used paint to sort of <laughs> seal together a couple of the boards. Um, I would like to find a way to preserve some part of the fence, uh, whether we laminate it, we cut it. You know, I talked to the neighbors about, well, we could, we could each find our favorite part and cut it and laminate it and make them into signs for the yard. We've, we've talked about like, well, maybe we could even do that, do a lot of those and, and sell those as a fundraiser for something that our, our neighborhood wants to support. So um, if anyone out there is a professional laminator or <laughs> wants to come talk to me about this, please do come by the Hope Fence. Uh, some, some part of it will be saved, but also through conversations like this and all of the documenting that has been done, and I've done a lot of documenting myself, uh, I feel like the, um, the messages of the fence are, are gonna live on. And maybe, maybe the idea of the fence will too. I mean, I don't understand why we have such boring fences and houses around it at all. I think everyone Facts. should be doing this everywhere, personally. Facts. Maybe you're going to be a trendsetter too, right? I might be seeing you on HGTV, right? You'll be you'll be like doing people's fences, right? This might be your new thing. Who knows? Who knows? People will be commissioning you to do their fence for them. Well, I'm just thrilled to 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 get a chance to share this story with our our audience, and even more so for folks to remember this. And I truly believe this that the effort that you did really made it true that hope will not be canceled. So I'm gonna come by and say hello to you here shortly and stuff, but thanks so much, Jen, for this conversation. We'll be seeing you again soon. Thanks, Kevin, take care. Absolutely, see you shortly. See you again. See you too. What was the very first thing that you actually put on it? So it's up here around the corner. So like I said, I made it three days into lockdown before I woke up and decided I needed to put we're all in this together uh, on the on the fence. Um, I was I needed to connect. I got to watch this unfold and the fact that it's grown into this in your wildest dreams. <laughs> well, right. even while it was happening, I didn't you know, I didn't really realize it was happening. Mm. You know, it was just a, it was a thing I did every day that got me through that day. You know, we, we chatted about this. You got inspired by actually the more than episode that yeah. I did with Bucket. Totally. And you wrote something on the fence. Where'd you do that? I at? do that. It's actually on the inside of the fence. Okay, we go we're going to walk around and yeah, check it out. I will wonderful. show you. Yes. All right. It's on the inside of the fence because the stuff inside is stuff for me. Because oh. I see the inside of the fence every day. Oh, wow. So th these are things that I really wanted to see. Oh, um, wow. That's amazing. Which included something you said. In the in, first episode in with Bucket. In the first episode, yeah. Oh, wow. So that's that, it right there. Yes. Ever tried, ever failed, no, no matter. 
Try again, fail, fail again, again, fail better. Samuel, Samuel Beckett. Beckett. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so good. See, I'm, I'm a part of your inspo yeah. wall, All right? Which is your place, daily. Man. Yeah, that was All over the place. I, there you have it. Another amazing episode of More Than with our guest, Jen Tate and the Hope Fence. Thanks so much for tuning in. How are you bringing hope to your community? Godspeed, peace, and play. Game on.